Hey guys, Duster Dan here signing on. Got another tile roofing leak repair video to do for you guys today. Just give you some uh, ideas about how to fix your roof if you need to and what all is involved. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks and hints and clues to how I uh, do this on a daily basis and uh, how I can stand behind my work. So right here you can see we have a broken tile here. Um, these are common on all roofs and if you fix them, flash them, seal them, uh, replace them soon enough you can avoid costly repairs. But you have to fix them before your felt paper goes bad. So uh, on this particular house the homeowner did not get to them soon enough because they were unaware of them and by the time I came out the felt paper was bad underneath and so over here there are actually two leaks on this roof that I am repairing I've already repaired the one and replaced all the felt paper but you can see here here is the uh, where the leak entry point uh, happened through the tile and you can see that it has just obliterated the felt paper all the way down so this felt paper has to be replaced there's no repairing this it has to be replaced here so I will need to put new blankets in here on every course of felt so let's go back to the uh, the first one I already did I'll show you the new felt paper on this and uh, come down here. By the time I got down to this course of felt paper down here, this course was good and relatively unaffected by the leak that began up there. So this is the first one that I replace, even though it wasn't bad. I know the one below it's good because this one's good. So that's the first hint or trick. You don't have to continue to pull up tile when you get to the felt paper that is good as you pull up this tile above. It always is worst nearest or typically it's worst nearest the leak point entry point through the tile and uh, by the second or third course below it it's done most of the damage and by three or four courses down typically there are exceptions to this but typically is starting to uh, uh, do a lot less damage by the time it gets down this far. Not only that but this section here is an exterior porch which is done in shiplap underneath the felt. So what that does is as the water gets through the felt, um, it goes, it has many seams in the shiplap through which it can escape the roof and uh, prevent or, or not do as much damage down below. So basically if you had solid plywood sheeting here, the water would continue on top of the sheeting trap between the sheeting and the felt paper and do more damage to the felt down slope where since you don't have solid plywood or OSB sheathing here you have one by eight shiplap it allows the water to literally get through the wood after it gets through the felt and does less damage to the felt down below so I've left these tile in place and I have replaced my felt paper here this course tucks up underneath the old felt paper above and then the next course overlaps my new one and tucks up underneath the old felt paper above. See how my new one tucks underneath the old one and the new one? You see that? That's important. And so uh, that helps keep the new felt on every single course waterproof. Okay, so again, next one up, overlaps the new down below, and tucks up underneath the old and the new above. Always tucking up underneath the old felt paper above. This is absolutely essential to prevent any water from threatening my repair down below if it gets in up there through the tile. Okay, so the course of felt below always has to tuck up underneath the good felt above. Now, you probably notice this looks a little rowdy here, but the reality is that my new felt comes all the way up under here. Okay, 
And that's why I took this tile out so I could pull these nails and tuck up underneath the old felt paper above. Right here is where the leak took place at, or right here. So I took out an extra course above, and even, even though the felt's a little tattered, it's really good all the way up in here. And so I have about an 8-inch overlap of the old felt overlapping my new felt. So this is a really good tuck, waterproof lap, even though the bottom edge of the old felt is a little ragged. Okay, so I will be uh, putting my tile back in now. Now that all the felt is replaced, I use these large metal cap nails, felt nails, to hold the felt in place. This is also another very important tip because if you use the cheap plastic ones, they will deteriorate fairly quickly over a short period of time and they will no longer hold the felt paper in place and they can actually cause leaks by pulling through once the plastic cap has deteriorated. These galvanized metal caps will never deteriorate as long as the roofing is intact. Okay, They don't rust out. Uh, the older ones did when they did not galvanize them, but they still lasted 10 to 100 times longer than the cheap plastic green caps or red caps do. Especially in the sun, if you have to have your felt paper exposed for any length of time, those plastic cap nails they deteriorate in about a week. That's about all it takes. And they do not have the holding power that the metal, the larger either square cap metal felt nails do or the round uh, cap metal felt nails do. So that's about it. I'll show you anything else uh, as I come up on it. As far as this tile goes, I will flash this and seal it. I don't have replacement tiles for this. These are old Celotex Marley tiles. Notice that the, uh, the wave in these tiles is slightly offset to this side. And uh, there are no other tiles on the market today unless you have these exact tiles. There are no other low profile S tiles that will fit and integrate with these. They cannot be replaced. They are obsolete. And unless you find some on somebody else's roof or in a boneyard, you're going to be out of luck and you'll have to repair these tiles. So, that's what I'm planning to do today. I'm planning to seal up this crack when I put that tile back in, and I will put a metal flashing over it as well to bridge these cracks. And I will conform the, the galvanized metal to the shape of the tile so it fits nice and low profile. It'll tuck up underneath the good tile up above, overlap these cracks, and it'll also be uh, glued in place with a construction adhesive. So that's about it for now. If I uh, come across anything else, I will uh, get back on camera and uh, add to the video. Otherwise, uh, that's it for now. All right, so here's a quick little tip on how to support a broken tile right in the middle of the break. You can see I've got a couple of pieces here. I'm gonna go ahead and glue these together, put them underneath the middle of the break, and uh, I'm gonna put this tile in here like this. I'm going, to glue, I'm going to glue this one in place. I'm going to have these two pieces glued together and glued underneath there to support this. The problem with crack tile is that a lot of times you have no way to support the brake when you glue it together and when you flash it. So that's how it's going to go together, just like that. Those pieces underneath glued in place will support this crack. I can seal along here, and I can seal across here. I can seal down this crack here to the other half that goes in here. I can glue this tile to the nailed full piece underneath so this piece will not slide out. And then I'll flash the whole thing with a piece of flashing that comes down past the break. Possibly the whole thing. So that's how you support uh, a tile that's been shattered or broken in the middle with uh, some extra uh, debris that you might have on the roof. If I glue these in place, they'll never go anywhere and they'll always support that tile and they'll always support that repair. Alright, so here you can see I have glued this seam shut and then sealed it down past the break area. You can see I've glued that tile together across there. I put a little small dollop of uh, adhesive down here and I've pre-glued this crack as it mates up against this one as I'm putting this tile back together. So 
that's uh, that's that's that. Um, you may be wondering how important it is to flash a tile after you glue it back together, and it depends on the circumstance. It depends because a vertical crack like this is not nearly as vulnerable to leaking again in the future as a horizontal crack that goes perpendicular across the flow of water in a heavy rain. So, this sealant may hold indefinitely and keep water out indefinitely. But if I were to just seal this horizontal crack where water literally runs like a river down these series of pans, this sealant may not hold indefinitely. So that's why I do both. That's why I seal it and I flash it on this entire section here. So um, on your roof, if you have a tile with any kind of a profile, uh, you probably, if you have a tile with a profile like any kind of a wave or an S-tile uh, profile, you have a series of pans, troughs, that all line up in a row and a, a heavy rain. You have a literally a, a creek running down that series of tile, that series of pans in a row. And so anytime you have a break across one of those pans, it's uh, typically a lot more volume of water threatens to get through that crack or that break than can ever possibly get through a vertical crack on a crown of a tile. Does that all make sense? If you have any questions about that, just comment down below in the comment section. Happy to answer any uh, other questions about that. Uh, another quick tip for you guys. When you go to put these tile back in place where they belong, um, you want to clean out this little uh, side lap channel. You can see the amount of dirt that builds up in there. And if you leave this dirt in there, it can uh, it can back up any water that falls in that groove and cause the water to go sideways around that debris buildup and actually cause a leak, uh, at least through the tile, and it'll be getting onto your felt paper. So clean out these um, side lap channels where your tiles overlap on the side. Just take a brush an old paintbrush and just brush them out before you put them back in. They don't have to be completely dust proof but just run a glove or a brush through them real quick to get any excess dirt out of there before you put them back in. That'll keep water flowing properly on the side lap too. Okay next tip. You may be wondering how important it is to nail every single tile as you're putting them back in. Either nail them or glue them to one that is nailed. And uh, let me just say the manufacturer's nail holes are, are in these tile for a reason, and it's not to look pretty. Um, it's very important to nail every single tile on your roof as you put it back on, uh, or glue the tile with a good construction adhesive, glue the tile that you can't nail, glue it to one that is nailed through your roof deck. Uh, Seems like common sense, but maybe it isn't. Maybe maybe it's not so obvious to everyone. Um, but any tile that slides out of place because it's glued wrong or not nailed can uh, eventually cause a breach in your felt paper and cause a leak, which can run anywhere from, if you have a handyman do it, you might be able to get away with $300. Uh, depending on how bad the leak is and how much damage there is, could be uh, get upwards of $1,000 for a leak repair for somebody who's competent and will stand behind their work. So that's a lot of money you don't want to waste just by neglecting to nail your tile or glue it properly. Um, the other thing is safety. Uh, obviously, these roofs have a pitch, and without nails or glue, these tile will slide, and they could... Uh, feasibly uh, slide off the end of the roof and hit a child or a grown-up, hit, hit a person or even a pet, um, and that's the last thing you want to happen, trust me. Because even if you don't care uh, at first when you're putting the tile back in, you will care. I don't care how insensitive you are or, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. If somebody gets hurt because of your work, you will care and it will bother you for a very long time, if not the rest of your life. So, anyways, nail all the tile or glue them to other tiles that you know are nailed properly. 
All right, so next tip. You might be wondering how important it is to take care of these on your tile, especially on obsolete tile that are irreplaceable. You might be wondering how important uh, this chipped corner is. And it really depends on how far up here it goes because remember, your tile course below this tile comes all the way up to here. And so when this crack here gets close to the top of this tile here, then you run the chance of getting water penetration through here. So um, I have come to the conclusion that the best way to deal with this uh, over the years is not to uh, glue this entire seam, but to glue from the top of the crack in the second groove, not the first groove. You don't want to put caulking in here because any water that gets in up here will come down and get trapped and will go sideways and defeat the purpose for which you are putting caulking in here in the first place. So you don't want to jam caulk into this corner here and block any water flow that may be from above. So you have two grooves here. You have the first groove here and then you have the second groove right here on the side lap. Okay? So where I like to do it is I start at the second groove here and I caulk this because there should be no water getting in this groove from up above. Only in the first groove that gets through this little crack. Make sense? Okay, so you start by putting caulking in here and come down where it meets, where these two tile meet. Uh, just caulk that little groove in there and then feather the edge and you should be just fine. Remember, this is a crown. This doesn't get a large volume of water. This only gets the water that falls directly on it from the rain. It's not the same as the amount of volume you have coming down here, down the troughs or the pans, okay? This is a crown, so minimal amount of water volume here. But you still want to seal this up. Um, and that's the smartest thing to do, in my opinion. It beats trying to replace tile because you can chip out a lot more of these corners trying to take these tile apart. They can go like dominoes sometimes with these corners. These are mainly cosmetic issues. These are not uh, typically um, waterproof uh, issues. They are mainly cosmetic, unless the crack is really long or comes up past that point like I talked about before. Um, but I like to glue these back together. Just like that, okay? And uh, that keeps that groove, that crack, nice and waterproof. Over time, you shouldn't have any issues with it, just like that. And if you have the piece, you can put it back in. I typically do not. The reason being is, once you put it back in, you run the risk of blocking water flow coming down there. The key to keeping a waterproof roof is not necessarily keeping all the water out or off of your tile, it is giving, the key is giving the water a place to flow on top of the tile. And so by putting the piece back in here, I run the risk of debris building up above the chip and causing water to divert one way or another. And I don't like to do that. Yes, it doesn't look as nice, but it's much more practical to leave that piece out. Okay, two more tips real quick. Um, when you're nailing these tile, you need to be careful not to break the tile as you're nailing the, the nail in. You'd be very fortunate to get the nail flush with the top of the tile without breaking it. So you're probably wondering how did I uh, set these nails below the surface of the tile. And the answer is I set them in flush and then I took another nail I just set it right on top of that nail and give it a little pop with my hammer. Okay, and that actually set the nail below the, the surface of the tile. Now that isn't necessary. Uh, setting them flush is perfect. They'll never cause a problem and they're, they're usually pretty tight. Not quite as tight as this. This tile will not move without 
a lot of effort uh, in the future. But this is good enough. The problem is getting them flush like this without cracking the tile is oftentimes difficult. So if you want to get them nice and tight, just use a nail and then pop it with your hammer, just a, a light tap uh, to get them nice and either flush or below the surface. So that's the first tip. Second tip is here's an example of a tile that you would just simply glue back together without flashing it because the crack doesn't get anywhere near the, the trough, the pan, until it gets up underneath the overlap of the next course of tile. So I would just seal this up here. You can put glue on this surface here, made it to the other one. You'll have it, you know, put it in there, put a thin bead across the surface, feather the edges, and, uh, and then you could even paint it to match the tile if you want. But that's what I would do. Uh, with the uh, any crack tile that are not in a pan. Uh, they don't typically need flashed. A little sealant will do just fine and uh, that's, how you, that's how you deal with those. Okay, so there we go. That's how that last repair on the crack should look. Notice I feather the edges on the on the sealant so that it sheets water. You want it, you want the water to just roll off there like that crack is not even underneath there. So you see how subtle that is and how uh, smooth for the most part. Obviously the sealant is thickest in the center of the crack and thinnest on, on the edges, okay? All right, so I got another crack over here, chip corner. This is on the underside of the lap, the side lap on this tile. And water running down this groove has the potential of getting in here. Uh, this chip corner is a little too close to the top of this and can potentially get through there in a driving rain, even with the next tile covering it. So what I'll do is I'll just put some sealant right in there underneath this tile, right underneath there and just set it down in the sealant and then take my finger and feather the edge and that water will never get back up that way even in a driving rain. So that's how I do it. And uh, let me do that real quick and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, so there you go. This is sealed underneath there and it's sealed on the surface too with the edges feathered and any water that's running down here will continue to run down as it runs over the sealant. It'll come down in here and run down this trough. And then the next tile on the side, let's use this one, clean out the side lap. Let's go ahead and drop this one in place. The next tile, which overlaps that, hides any further vulnerability uh, to that broken corner. And that's how I deal with those. All right, next tip. Here's another tile with a chip corner up on the top corner of the side lap and uh, this crack is getting real close to being exposed by the next tile that would overlap it on the side so like that okay so that crack is under there and in a driving rain you could get water penetration through there which you don't want so I'll show you how I deal with this so once I put this tile in place where it belongs in my row, I will go ahead and I'll run a bead of caulking sealant down here and along this edge. And that will, once, once the other tile overlaps it on the side, it'll glue, on the underside of this tile, will glue to the top side in the corner of this tile and will make an impenetrable seal so that in a driving rain you can't get water through there and that's how I deal with that one. So this is the corner that I just sealed shut in here and notice you can barely even tell that there's any caulking underneath there. You do not need to seal this entire groove unless the water channel underneath this one underneath here is completely blown out. Then you need to seal the entire groove to prevent water from getting in there at all, okay? As long as this channel is still intact, the full length of this tile underneath here, do not seal this seam because you will trap water uh, inevitably and cause a leak instead of preventing one. 
this, these seams are left open in, intentionally. And you can see there are ridges on this water channel to keep the water running down and prevent it from going sideways. So you want to leave these channels open for water flow. These seams open for water flow, okay? I just sealed underneath there um, where the two tile meet instead of running an entire bead down here and running the risk of blocking that water uh, from being able to flow down and out on top of the tile below. So here we have a tile that's cracked right down the center of the crown vertically, okay? And this is one that can just be sealed up. Since the crack is to the right of the nail hole, I can actually nail this piece in place once I get it properly aligned. And this piece will be glued to the one below it that's nailed right here. Okay, there's a dollop of glue under here, and it's going to be glued along this crack as well. So I'm going to do a preliminary uh, glue uh, on, on this edge here. And then once I get everything in place and nail this piece in place, I'll go ahead and put another bead along the surface, feather the edges so it's nice and smooth and water sheets off of it. Um, also, a quick tip on your caulking tubes. Get yourself some six inch spikes, okay? Because these tiny little puncture thingies are nowhere near large enough or efficient enough to breach the seal inside the tube of caulking, okay? You gotta cut the tip and you gotta breach that seal that's inside there in order to get the caulking to come out. If you use this tiny little stupid pin to try and tear open that seal inside there, see it? You will not get very good flow out of this caulking gun and it'll be painful and frustrating to you. So if you get a little six, six inch spike, I'll see if I can show you. Obviously, uh, I use these for crowns or two-piece clay tile also. So I get a big 50-pound box and I carry them in my pouches, right? In there for the caulking anytime I need to open a new tube. Okay, so you run it in there. Okay, get it in there far enough. And then you just rotate it around and it tears the seal open all the way around inside there. Okay, I'm going to set the camera down quickly or briefly. Actually, I don't know. Here, why don't we do this? I'll uh, turn the camera around on myself and I'll show you how I do it. So here I am. This is what I look like. <laughs> my big sombrero to keep the sun off my neck. Anyways, I'm going to set the camera down and I'll do what I'm talking about. See if I can keep it from sliding. Nope, it's going to slide. Ah, Android Mini. Very slick, okay. So here's the spike in the tube of caulking. Gotta love that sun right above my head, huh? Anyways, you take the, the spike and just roll it around inside there. And you can feel it's tearing the seal inside the tube. And then I push it to one side and I turn it as I pull it out so that it comes out with a lot less gunk on it than it would otherwise. I just stick it back in my pouch and now I've got good flow coming out of that caulking tube. Okay, you may not think that's a big deal until you try and get caulking through a tiny little hole. When you do this for a living, you need efficiency and uh, it matters. <laughs> All right, so back to the roof and enough of me. Okay, so here you can see I've sealed it the full length. Oh, I didn't nail it yet. Go ahead and pop a nail down inside there. I'm going to get gunk on my hammer doing it, but better than leaving it unnailed. Hey, clean hammer, look at that, got the nail in. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my, my hands into my sealant here and I'm gonna feather the edge. Okay, you don't wanna leave a big bulky bead of caulk on the surface of this tile. It looks bad and it can encourage water uh, to have to go around the, the thickness of the sealant, okay? You want to feather this edge for water runoff encouragement. Now I just wipe my finger off. 
wipe it off. And so that's what it should look like. Nice broad uh, seal, thickest in the middle where the crack is. Remember there's sealant down inside the crack as well and this should be just fine for a long, long time, probably five to ten years. Um, now I'm gonna, all I have is one more course to put in. Uh, I've explained in other videos where to uh, glue this last course in at. You obviously can't nail it because the manufacturer's nail hole is covered. You can see by the lap here that nail is covered so you can't nail underneath the other tile. So that last course has to be glued in place. So where to glue it at is important. Glue it on the crown of the tile below which is nailed. You can glue it in the center of the crown these center crowns here, but I have found by experience that these are just slightly taller. This crown is typically slightly taller than this crown, just because of the way the tile sits. You don't get as tight of a fit on the top of this crown as you do on the top of this crown where the next tile sits, rests on that corner. So this is the best place to glue it. And obviously again, or maybe not so obviously, you want to clean that tile. You want to get it clean down to the surface of the tile so the glue sticks. So that's what I do. I'll put a dollop on each one of these crowns after I seal them. Nice clean surface under there. Take my <clears throat> flat bar, go up underneath the tile above wedge it up underneath there to separate that top course. Got it? Okay, because you can't have pressure on this tile as you're sliding it in. Now, one last tip that I can see for now. You have nail holes in the felt up underneath here, but remember this course of felt goes all the way up here, eight inches. Okay, that is not common for an underlap, but in this case, um, this was actually a short course, and so I was able to tuck it up further than typical. Um, if you don't seal these, they will leak in a heavy rain, or if you don't get the course of felt far enough up underneath these nail holes to make them waterproof. So you might have to add a short course here if your felt doesn't fall like mine did, where I had a significant overlap underlap up inside there. So these need to be sealed or underlapped properly. In this case I have a nice underlap and I don't need to seal them. If you seal them, seal them with Henry's or Roofer's Mastic but clean the hole first before you put the mastic on there and slide the new tile in place. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and do the first one after I dollop. I'll dollop that one last because I can't I can't put a doll up there until I'm down that way. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this with one hand. Okay, you can see now why it's so important to have the weight off of these in order to get them up underneath there. So I got my hands and my knee into the caulking on this cracked tile. So I, I sealed this up to show you guys in the video the tip, but normally I do not uh, seal these up until I'm done putting all the tile back in so I don't step in it. Uh, anyways, this is easy to clean up and I didn't mess it up too bad. So I just readjust that, make that nice and smooth again and clean my knee off and I'm good to go. But you can see how this doll up here squished out so you get a good tight fit and this tile will never go anywhere because it's nailed to the ones below it. Okay, so that's how I put the last course of tile in. You just go all the way across the same way till you get the, to the end and I'll show you how to do the last tile. Okay, so typically you will have to move whatever uh, wedge you put underneath those tile. Every time you put another tile in you've got to move your flat bar or your wedge over to the next tile where you're at until you get to approximately the last two tiles to put in place. Then the flat bar or the wedge if it's tall enough will hold both these tile up sufficiently. Otherwise it's too far away from these in order to hold these up. 
So I've got a dollop there. Let me go ahead and grab my last two tiles, slip them in there for y'all to see. in and sealed glued in place do this last one so this one has to go in <clears throat> it goes under on the side first like that and then I can slide it up and that is why I didn't put any sealant here yet okay because it would have just pushed it out of the way and wouldn't be holding, or glue, wouldn't be holding the tile properly. So I'm going to put a little dollop up there. This tile is nailed. This one is not. So this is nailed to that one. Pull my lever, pull my wedge out of there. That's now tight and sealed. And I'm going to put one small dollop underneath last little corner right there right in there and then pull that out that's nice and tight now those tile won't go anywhere and that's how you replace the last course of tile I'll come back when I show you how I flashed that broken one down there you remember that one I put I sealed up still gotta flash that so I'll come back next time I show you what that looks like Okay, here we go. You can see I have pre-shaped my 8x10 tin shingle to the shape of the tile. See how well that conforms to the shape of the tile? You just keep bending it until you get it to the shape of the, the tile. I've got my wedge in there to separate that. Now I can tuck this up underneath there. I only need one of them to span both crowns. And so this will tuck up underneath there just a couple inches and it will bridge the crack down here as well for obvious reasons that we uh, talked about earlier. So before I put it in place, I just put a dollop of sealant right here. Just a little more here, a little bit down this crown here. That will come in contact with the underside of the crowns on the... On the uh, piece of metal and uh, just slide it up underneath there make sure you don't go too far and then you just press it down into place make sure it's coming down past the crack the crack is right about in here now and then I'm gonna pull my flat bar out and then uh, it's basically done all I got to do is detail paint that, tan to match the tile, and I'm good to go. You'll never even see that from the ground. So that's it. It's uh, been an interesting day with a lot of tips, a lot of hints that I thought may be helpful to you guys uh, out there on YouTube. I really appreciate you guys tuning in and watching. I appreciate your subscriptions as well. Thank you very much. Thank you for the likes. And I uh, hope you all have a really uh, blessed day. And I hope this video was useful to many of you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those. And I uh, hope you all have a good week. And I'll see you out there on YouTube. Duster Dan out.